Hello again, welcome back to another installment of our WordPress Client Portal series. In this video, uh, well actually first off in the last video we kind of talked about the dashboard, we built it out a little bit more. Um, we have now uh, you know, something kind of to look at here if we go over the dashboard a little bit. Uh, obviously some still th some things to clean up, but in this video specifically, I think I wanna go back to the WooCommerce stuff and kind of talk about some of the settings because it is gonna affect some of the things that we have on the front end depending on how you want to, uh, you know, charge your clients and, and just kind of manage all of the uh, expectations and things like that as far as how you handle it. In our business, in our agency, in our portal, again, the old one built with Elementor and moving forward into the future here, is that every single one of our clients is has an account with us on this portal. This, so they have an account. Uh, every single one of our clients ends up normally doing the maintenance or the, you know, the website management, website care plan, whatever you want to call it. So they're going to have, they're going to pay their their website creation bill, you know, their invoice and everything through this platform. We're going to build them through here. And then we're also going to set them up on a subscription through here and they can manage everything from this platform. So to do that, again, reiterating on a couple of videos ago, you need WooCommerce, you need WooCommerce subscriptions, and you need your preferred payment gateway. In our case, it's QuickBooks payments or into its payment gateway. Um, so there are potentially some extra costs there if you want to do it like that. You could do it a different way, but regardless, if you're going to use WooCommerce, then there's some things you might want to set up depending again on the type of business that you're running and the things that you're selling and all that sort of stuff. So um, in our case, we're not shipping anything. We're not doing anything like that. Uh, so there's certain things that I'm just going to run through some of these settings real quick. So on the other on the other screen that you can't see, I have the, the settings from the old uh, portal that are working very well. And I'm just going to transfer a lot of them over here. So we can throw in the address and everything like that. Um, we're selling to, you know, probably all countries. Don't I don't see a problem with that. But shipping locations, we talked about this in another video. <clears throat> there's no reason um, for shipping. Like we're not shipping anything. So we disable that shop and country cool enable tax and rates calculations depending on you know your situation your you know laws in your area or whatever maybe you need to have tax and everything like that but that's not something that we handle front facing by any means um, obviously there's things like sales tax and all that but if you're performing services i'm not an accountant this is not accounting advice legal advice financial advice whatever look into that but if you're, if you're doing it the same way that we're doing it here, you're probably not gonna have to enable that on the front end. Um, you can probably just say like, hey, if this is $1,000, it's $1,000, you know what I mean? So look into that, enable the use of coupon codes. I mean, you can keep that one if you'd like, but for me, I am going to turn that off because maybe in certain cases you wanna do that and all that and that sort of stuff, but I'm, but like mostly, there's a couple things and I'm, this isn't, again, this isn't a full WooCommerce tutorial, okay? However, I will say this just as a blanket statement. What I've found is there's certain things when you're enabling and disabling things, specifically in WooCommerce, but in other plugins as well, it makes the U, it makes UI changes. And when you have uh, you know, in any sort of e-commerce platform, if your goal is to make the, the UI as simple as possible and you don't need all these extra options, maybe just turn them off unless you absolutely need them. So I've never once given a coupon code for these types of things. So I'm going to turn that off because then hopefully the, the coupon code thing doesn't even come up on the, on the checkout page or anything like that, which we could change and all that sort of stuff. But I'm saying like at a baseline, it's probably easier to turn a lot of stuff off and then turn it back on if you need it. So just a little thought there again, set up your currency and your, and your, um, you know, your currency, all your other currency options and everything like that. Let's have head over to project, uh, products here. Now this one is interesting. So I've done this a couple of different ways. The way that WooCommerce wants you to work, right, is they want you to have a shop page. They want you to have products on there. They want people to go to the shop page or the archives or whatever, click the thing, go to the single, add this thing to your cart, and then it'll either read, you can either have it redirect to the cart or you can have it, you know, whatever. Now, this is really definitely very um, personal preference of the way that you want to handle this. And we may jump in and kind of like build a couple of these just to kind of see. The way that I, I'm going to give you, I'm just going to anecdote here a little bit, you know, kind of give you some some thoughts, okay? And again, use the chapters if you want to skip around. I keep forgetting to say that. Um, what I used to do was I used to have a shop page, okay? Just try to envision this. I used to have a shop page because we didn't get there yet, but we're going to have to create products for the things that we have, right? We're going to have to create products for different, um, you know, uh, website creation stuff. We're going to have to create products for a website management plans. We're gonna have to do all that. I used to have a shop page. 
the shop page was basically hidden. They couldn't get to the shop page. Um, you know, just like users of the platform, and everything like that. They couldn't get to it. They couldn't like go around and just like grab people's, you know, like uh, different website creation products and all that sort of stuff because this isn't really built for that. But even in like something like QuickBooks, you still need to have like a project or, or a product or like a service to to charge and to put on like an invoice. So you always have to have like the the content type of products, if that makes sense. The reason I'm bringing this up is because you have to think about the flow that you want your customers to go through when they are first setting up an account or when they've already had an account and you need to charge them again. What I have ended up finding was a really good flow, and I will illustrate this when we get to it, is that I create them basically in order. They create an account, and then I give them the, I, they go to the order. They don't go to the product. I used to have it where they go to the product, they add the product specifically to their cart, and then they check out. You can do it that way if you're giving them some options, but if you're giving them a proposal and they already know what their quote unquote like invoice or order is gonna be, you can just build that in WooCommerce and then you can just send them directly to that that order and they can just pay for it, like just go straight through the checkout. It's cleaner, I think it's better in a lot of ways. And the reason I'm saying all that is because we have things like add to cart behavior. It's like redirect to the cart after a successful addition. In my older one over here on the side, I, I do have that checked, so I will check it here, but I don't think it's gonna play in that much. Um, Ajax cart thing, we have that as well. Placeholder image, um, you know, we'll just see what that is. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, this isn't gonna matter really, but I'm in you know the United States, so I'm gonna change it to like pounds and inches or whatever. And then for product reviews, really not important. So we're just gonna get rid of all that, and that's perfect there. Uh, let's go over to actually let's go to let's go through these these sub ones here. I always forget to to go through the uh, little extra ones here. Let's go to inventory. And let's see what we got. So on the old one, we have stock management. We have all this other stuff. But I'm going to be honest with you. I can't think of a reason why we actually need stock management because we don't have anything in stock. I mean, the tough part here is that we kind of have stock in a way. Like, because if you if you sell like a project to somebody, it's like there's no way you can see that um, anymore. But again, this isn't like a physical product thing. So it's really just like kind of, it's not, I don't want to say WooCommerce isn't necessarily built for this because it is kind of, but it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weirdness that you're going to play around with here. So I'm just kind of getting the baseline setting. So I'm going to turn to actually enable stock management off and then we'll figure out a way to, um, we'll double check that on the other, on the other side once we kind of get it all. Because again, the bottom line is like it or not, you're going to have to have all these products. You're going to have to have like a shop but you don't want them to access it. You don't want them to be able to click anything else. And not, and on, not only that, I mean, they're probably not going to want to buy random stuff that's not a, you know in accordance with their project. I'm just saying from like a, uh, to make it as clean as possible and as, and as uh, you know, like foolproof as possible, you don't want them to be able to access anything other than is kind of the stuff that they're supposed to buy, right? So. Um, just kind of an example. Um, stock display format. Honestly, that's not going to matter because we're going to build our own thing anyway. There, downloadable products. This may be something kind of interesting uh, for you, depending on what kind of portal you are making. Um, I'm actually going to, th I'm actually going to give you an, an example because I think some people will probably make this where like it there are downloadable products. Um, I would probably say probably force the download like as soon as it as soon as it does it I don't you know I don't know I, you'd have to play around with it because like nothing that I'm doing on my end is going to have forced download so open down uh, yeah I mean just play around with these settings if this if this applies to you approve downloaded directories um that's interesting but yeah again not really pertinent and then advanced uh, let me just see if we changed anything anywhere here now it's pretty straightforward yeah, so no, that's pretty straightforward. Again, there's it's just not really a shop, you know. I mean, it's not it's not like a hundred percent really that big of a, a thing. I'm gonna move these. Um, I need to make these work, you know. I need to set these up, and we'll if you if you're using Stripe or something like that, then you know you can you can use something different. But um, I'm not gonna use WooCommerce payments. I'm gonna use these Intuit uh, credit card and eCheck. Um, and honestly. E-check is really nice that you have that option. I might end up turning that off though. I've used it a couple of times, but I'm not 100% sure. 
So, um, but yeah, Intuit's payment gateway, we're not going to set that up right now, but you definitely want to make sure that your, your payments and everything like that are um, where they should be as far as that goes. Okay, now this these are actually going to matter. Okay, so like, here's the thing. So with this guest checkout type thing, is this is kind of what I was talking about. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to carefully look at the settings over here on the left because I want to make sure that I'm kind of explaining it as best as I can without actually you know being where we need to be yet with the with the whole flow piece of it. Allow customers to place orders without an account. So I have that checked over there. And the reason, the specific reason that I had this check, I'm going to give you examples and you can think for yourself if you want to do this or not. There's just too much personal preference that goes in this. If they have a subscription, obviously they need an account. That does that, that just makes sense. But here's, I'm going to give you a situation that, I, that this happened to me. I had a situation where somebody reached out to me for emergency website support. Their website was broken and they got referred to me and they needed to do that. Okay. Well, I want to do all of my invoicing, all of my billing through this portal. If I do some of it through here, I want to do all of it through here, right? So my thought process that I had to deal with at that point was, okay, well, I don't necessarily want to have them make an account and everything like that because they may never do business with me again. That's a very real possibility if you ever do like one-off type stuff like that. So I don't want to have them to go through an account and make an account and do all that. That's not necessary. So what I did was I turned that on and then I created an order as a guest order then they were able to, WooCommerce says it's kind of all built in, where you can send them a link. It's a guest order link. They can put in like, I think they might be able to put in their email or just like create, they're not creating an account, but they're just basically buying something like you would a guest checkout on any other website. And instead of the order being associated directly with like an account on the website, it's just associated with an email. And then the really cool part is if they, if they end up, this is what happened in this case, I had that emergency situation go on they they logged in with their email they paid me through that and everything like that then on the on the end the back end and what ended up happening is they actually ended up signing with us and you know doing a, a website and, and recurring and all that sort of stuff so that last that transaction will all what they use the same email will end up coming into their account i'm sure you could change it too if they used a different email i'm sure you could you know move that transaction to to apply but my point is like, let's say that you had somebody that you did one-offs for, like five one-offs and they use the same email and then they op and then they ended up getting a subscription with you and they had to make an account or they ended up being long-term with you and they ended up making an account. That is kind of like an interesting way. Again, it's not a new concept to, to have a guest checkout, but in this specific, you know, instance and the way that this might work, that's, that's exactly how it ended up working with me. So I ended up doing that allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout. I mean, like you could check that, um, but it's not really necessary because if they're, if they're not doing that one segmented, you know, outlier of, uh, that's just going to literally give them a box in the checkout that says like log in or something. But if they're at that point, they're probably already going to be logged in or they're going to be definitely a guest. So you could leave that lock. You can leave that there. You cannot leave that there. Um, for the time being, I'm just gonna, I'll check it for now, actually, because we may want to see that later on, but most of the time they're going to be logged in. So they're not even going to see the option to log in. So account creation. So this one, um, what I have is on the other one, I just have this one. I have allow customers. I'm going to uncheck this, not I'm probably not gonna matter, but I have allow customers to create an account during checkout. That's again, it's a, it's a personal preference. Um, you may want them to do it then. You may not want them to do it then. Uh, I'm trying to think the best use case. I mean, I have it checked on the other one. Like I said, maybe we'll maybe we'll uncheck it or change it up. But that would be again. It's like it's like can they can they create an account during checkout? The only time they're going to want to do that is if they are guest checking out, right? And if they're guest checking out, then maybe you don't want them. Honestly, I'm thinking out loud here. The in my opinion, I almost don't want them to do this. Because if they're checking out as a guest, I don't want them to create an account with the the WooCommerce default WordPress flow. I want them to create an account the way that I want them to create an account, which would be like my controlled situation with WS form or me internally. I'm actually going to uncheck this. Um, subscription and customers to create account during checkout. That's probably not going to happen. I always make them create an account in the first place. And again, this flow might change. If I if I come up with a with like a like an even better flow for all this, I will make another video and addendum to all this, but I'm just going through the 
standard ones here. When creating an account, automatically generate an account username. See, I don't, I don't like that because I want to control that. These are nice settings if you're just doing this, um, you know, com almost like vanilla WooCommerce and WordPress. But I have Word, I have WS Form and User Management, so I can do whatever the hell I want. When creating an account, set the user, set the new user link their password. I like that concept, um, but I don't like it through this. So I'm just going to leave all that unchecked. Um, remove personal. Da, 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 um, yes, I have all this stuff unchecked on the other one right now, but we don't really need to. Like we can handle that. We can handle that kind of on a case by case basis. I think. Um, uh, over here, this isn't. Again, this is kind of personal preference to a certain degree as far as what you want to put here. We're going to work on the policies and everything like that later. We'll use Termageddon for all that. Um, but yeah, okay, that's cool. All right, so let's save those changes. Let's go to the next thing, emails. What do we got for emails? I have had a quite the crazy um, situation with emails over the years here with just like the way that this all works. So for instance, I'm going to go from name and I'm going to say find a tech. Um, actually over here I have orders. We'll come back to the top because there's a lot to talk about there. I don't know if I really like orders, but <clears throat> um, but that's that's something to put there. You can put a header image. And again, this is just, you know, this is the, uh, the standard WooCommerce stuff. You, I'm sure you could integrate with something else if you wanted to actually send your your things differently, but I'm just gonna throw in all of these. Obviously, all personal preference here. Receive email notifications with additional guidance. Um, I have that checked on the other one, but I don't see why I would need that, so let's just forget that for now. Okay, so let's go back up to these orders. I'm going to give you a brief understanding and um, a brief, I don't know, just my, my thoughts on, on these, and we'll go through each one. So like new order, okay? So new order is... Obviously, relatively straightforward. I'm gonna check if I changed anything. Haven't I haven't really changed anything because I don't actually care too much about most of the ones that come to me. So new order comes to me, as you can see, right? So quick, quick, quick uh, explainer here. E this is the email type. This is the whatever content type. This is who's getting it. So if they're coming to you, right? Like if this is your email and they're coming to you, then it's not really the end of the world. Like what it looks like. I mean, obviously you could change it, but it's coming to you. You really want to focus on the ones that are going out to them. So let me let me explain a couple things. I have for processing order and completed order, I actually have those turned off on the um, on the uh, the other one. Now processing order, you definitely want to have turned off because there's no real reason. We're going to try to auto complete these orders because the, the the order doesn't really get processed in my opinion. Like you don't they like. For instance, if you were buying something, like if you were buying like a physical good, okay, let's say you're buying a hat, then you'd want you'd want immediately uh, an, um, an order to be like placed, and then they would get an order saying like, hey, thanks, your order has been processed. Then you're going to want an email that says your order has been complete or your order has been shipped or something like that. It's nice that they have obviously these two, type, these two types of things, but in our case, I've always been of the opinion with stuff like this is once the order is placed, it's complete. Like there's no, there's no processing of these orders. It's like the, like the, like the, I'm assuming the credit card transactions go, unless there's, unless it fails, like the credit card transaction or whatever has gone through and we've gotten the order. We know what we need to do. The project has you know been paid for and we're going to start it or what have you. So I always have turned off this processing order one, because if you don't turn it off, then they get like two emails and it's just a little confusing. So that's my, that's my thoughts on, um, on the processing order one. Now I also have on this other side, um, completed order turned off. And that actually might be, I feel like that might be in error right now because I did specifically go in here and change this. So I'm gonna actually turn this back on, on my other one, and I'm gonna show you the way that I did this. So I'm gonna change these, and I'm gonna explain why I did this. Um, and the, the concept here is, again, the flow. They are getting an invoice from me. Let's say, and it's not—it's an invoice, but it's not really an invoice. I mean, it's—it's a—it's basically I created an order, and they're getting notification of that, or I'm sending them a link or something. Once they pay that, though, once they go through the portal and they pay that, 
the email that they're going to get when it auto completes and the order does get completed once the you know the transaction gets processed is payment confirmation invoice number whatever so they got an email that had something like this and now it says payment confirmation and the email heading is paid invoice whatever and it just says that it's paid so my point is like as a consumer i want to i want to get a notification that i have to pay i want to pay it and then i want to get notified like immediately basically like you would like you would for any other platform now I will say though, I don't remember what this uh, default one looked like here, um, but it just says like your order is complete. And to me, that just didn't, that just didn't really, it's not the same thing. You know, like they think of it as an order. Yeah, but it's not like an Amazon order. It's like, it's an invoice. So um, I tried to use similar uh, stuff there, but yeah, you utilize whatever you kind of want as far as, uh, as far as that goes. So we got processing orders no longer. We have a completed order. Um, refunded order. Hopefully you never have to refund anything. Just left it on. Um, this is the other one. This is another big one. Processing renewal order. I have this turned off. And the reason I have this turned off is because again, this is a little tougher. Um, I think there's actually a setting. I'm going to have to double check because I know like I've used a code snippet in the past for this, but with, with the orders, I'm pretty sure you can auto complete like virtual orders, but with the, with the subscriptions, a lot of times there's an issue. There was an issue in the past where it didn't auto complete and if it doesn't auto complete now you're in this weird situation where like you're like six months in or whatever and they're like they got a none of their subscriptions have like completed right the renewal orders they haven't like completed so they're like all processing it's just weird it's confusing again if you're doing virtual stuff there's almost no reason that the processing piece needs to be in place um it's not like i would not recommend like processing it until you actually do the work and then it's completed it's it's weird it's just again this i don't this the system is really good for a lot of things but it doesn't seem like that's you know to, to me the flow just doesn't make sense there. it's like that's that step is just not necessary for what we're trying to do um i feel like in most cases here so um all right what else do we have here so Canceled subscription, expired subscription, suspended su subscription. This is very interesting on this end, this new end, because I do have those turned on on the other one, and obviously they're all going to to me, right? The admin here. I would personally like to know. I've never had, and you can you can play around with this. I've never had anybody like manually cancel their subscription uh, to this point, but it depends on how how much you. Uh, how you how you how much you emphasize your portal how much people are actually in there and also if you give them the option to even do that you may not want to do that because if they cancel their subscription it's not like it depends on how hands off you want to be if you're running a website you know development agency design agency and you're doing maintenance and everything like that for them then you may want to have them have the opportunity to cancel but if they cancel there's got to be like a kind of a process in place right if if they cancel and they've paid for a month, they have 15 days left, then, you know, ultimately the way it should work is like on that last day, they should, their website should be no longer hosted with you. Like it shouldn't be accessible, right? If you could automate that, that'd be sick. But, but at the same time, it's like, to me, that's not really the way that we handle our business. It's more of like, like reach out to us or like request to cancel and then we'll cancel for you and we'll set the, we'll set that process up and we'll, you know, we'll get rid of it. You should make it, I feel like, simple to request a cancellation but maybe not like just cancel not in this case because this is too this is too um it's too tight of a of a of a of a, a an engagement you know like it's not like they're canceling netflix it's a little it's a little bit more than that so i don't know make your own decision there but the reason is because these things are i still want to get notified when those things get canceled or when they're expired or anything like that they're probably not going to expire in our case but um i just turned those on just because I think it's a it's a it's a little neat thing to have. Um, completed renewal order. I want to talk about that because I think I've changed that as well. Um, yeah, I changed a little bit. So um, I'm gonna copy it from over here. Yeah. Well, actually, this is yeah, this is weird the way that this is written. So like, you order find a tech renewal receipt from whatever. Now, honestly, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the this email in my business is going to go out because it's their website management receipt. Now, there there might be a way to kind of throw in a variable to say a specific type of thing, but in my in my mind, 
I would actually kind of like your find it tech um, like website. I want to, I want to, I want them to know exactly. I, again, when I'm thinking of how to do these things, I am immediately and specifically thinking of how do other big companies notify you that they auto charged you? You know what I mean? So it's like, what are, wh how can I communicate as quickly as possible in the subject line that they paid for something and I auto charge them? So it's like your web, your find a tech, um, Honestly, I don't even know if I need to say find a tech here because it's going to come from find a tech, but I would say like maybe your website management renewal receipt from, and you honestly, I don't, I don't know about order date. I mean, you could, you could put that in there, but yeah. So, so something like that. And then email heading, like your renewal uh, order is complete. Thank you. you play around with it. Um, but my, 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 my school of thought is I might, I might change that for myself. My thought is again, understand, understand what this email is. It's going to be a random day, you know, in the month and they're going to get an email. Their card is going to get charged 250, $300 or whatever. And they're going to get an email and it's going to say your website management renewal receipt from whatever. And, you know, it's literally going to say your company's name and then it's going to say what that is. Just make sure they understand what that is and make sure you're, notifying them when you charge them. You can go one step further and this is probably not going to get covered here because I don't think that it's necessary every month. If you if you are charging at longer increments like bi-monthly, semi-annually, whatever, you should look into I know there's there's probably multiple ways to do this, but when I looked into it a while ago when I was um charging annually, which I wouldn't really recommend, but we could have a different discussion on that. There is a I know there's a Woo plugin specifically from the Woo uh thing that is like um payment reminders or like subscription reminders and you can automatically say like three days before you can say hey your thing is coming up your thing is going to renew soon woo actually does that with you you know if you have any products through them they say like hey you know that thing that you that you bought a year ago it's actually going to renew in like you know a week or something i would highly recommend that at a month i don't think it's necessary but any higher time frame i would consider that uh just giving you some tips on uh on that piece of it there so Okay, so let's see if there's anything else email-wise here. Um, I think we are pretty good. There's like new account and like, you know, passwords and everything like that. I'm looking on the other side. Um, I think that's pretty much it uh, for now. There may be... Mm, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna show you this one because I don't have it in here yet. Wait, actually, do I? Um, no, I don't, I don't think I have it in here yet. I'm going to, I'm going to bring in the old one here for a second and let me show you this because I think this, this one's really important, but for some reason I don't think it's on here yet because I think it's from the uh, payment processor that we don't have fully set up yet because honestly, I don't know if I can set that up, you know, without porting the old stuff over. So we'll, we'll, we'll play around with that, but here's, this one's really important. Um, actually not this one, this one, customer payment retry. I have had this happen and you will absolutely have this happen. Okay, so your client it put a credit card in, right? Three years ago with you. And then at some point, that credit card is going to expire. So when that credit card expires or if there's some sort of issue with the payment, it's on a, it's auto getting, it's getting auto, you know, renewed, right? So they're not like in there every time, they're not putting those numbers in. At some point that is gonna expire. And at some point you're gonna have this happen where it's the day that it's supposed to get paid and instead it get, it fails and there's a customer payment retry and whatever. At some point, this email is gonna go out where it says, where like you should write something like this because I had to change this because it was like, I, 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 want them to, I want them to understand that this is a problem. So I literally wrote action required, automatic website payment failed. Like, so again, however you wanna write this, I would probably change some of this verbiage, but something like this to get their, get their attention. And then say automatic thing and then please reply to this email for further assistance. It also automatically gives them this email template from WooCommerce does give them a way to click the button and go to the order. But if they haven't been in the portal, you know, for whatever reason, if, if you don't make it like super valuable and they're not in there, then make sure you say something like, hey, just reply to this email and we'll take care of it for you. You know, just let us know and we'll take care of it for you or whatever. But it also does give them the option to go in there and do that. But I'm telling you, like you, this will happen to you if you're doing subscriptions. At some point, the, the credit card will go bad. Make sure that you understand as quickly as possible that you can rectify that because you don't want to be. I had it happen to me, and it took like two weeks because like 
before I had that written in there, like it was back and forth and I was like, okay, maybe I'll wait because WooCommerce does this thing where it automatically um, tries it like every, it tries it like in an hour, then in four hours, then in eight hours, then in 12 hours. Like it's it's this thing where it does keep trying, but it's not going to work. Like it's not, it's, it's only going to work if it's like a debit card or something and it doesn't have money and then it does 12 hours later. If it's a bad expiration date, you have to go in and change it manually or they have to. So just a really, uh, hopefully a tip that helps you there. All right, I think we're pretty much good on the, um, actually I do wanna check one more thing here because I think, okay, this one maybe as well. Let me slide this back over. Sorry, sorry, let me slide this back over here. I'm doing some weird stuff with the screen right now. I'm gonna slide this back over just to kind of um, do this because there's one more thing because this is another situation where if you're sending out like a specific invoice you know, if you're using this WooCommerce thing as kind of like an invoice type situation, this may be something that you also run into. Um, I did edit this one, okay? So I edited this one. This is customer invoice order details. Now, you're probably not gonna have to like necessarily use this depending on what your, your process is, but let me throw all these in here and then I'll explain just so we can kind of see it together. Oops, there we go. Okay, so what this is, is this is like the invoice, like the customer invoice order details. Now you you kind of like send this out, um, like if you, if you create something and then you have to send it, you kind of like want, I, I don't know. It's, it's just like, it's kind of like if they ask you for an invoice on an order because they got one and they, and they need the details again or whatever, like you can kind of manually send this one, I'm pretty sure. And there's, it just kind of says like, again, like you, you paid this, you know, it's been paid. Here you go. Here's a, here's a recap of everything. But I've had this happen before as well, where, you know, they, they should be getting like, if, let me show you an example. They should be getting this email, like completed order, right? This automatically should be getting, but this one, I'm all over the place here. Where is it? This one. So they should be getting the completed order thing, but if they don't get that or they want the full order details and everything else like that or whatever, and you have to manually send, I'm, like this is kind of the same exact, same exact thing. It's just one is automated and one is like you can click a button and send them the extra stuff. So um, would again recommend potentially changing that one. Everything else is probably um, relatively straightforward. I'm just gonna look at this new renewal order one because that would be like when you start a new subscription. But again, it's it's them, you know, it's from literally like this one, you know, like uh, new renewal order, it, it comes to you, so it doesn't really matter, but that's when somebody like kind of starts a subscription. The other one would be when a subscription is, actually I think that's, there's one that I get all the time, I literally just got one this morning, where it's like they, they send, it's automatic message to me saying that somebody, um, like a new renewal, a new renewal order has been processed, and I'm pretty sure it's basically that one. So again, if you want to see something different there, if you want to be notified, if you don't want to be notified, turn it off. But um, you know, you know, if you want to, if you want to know when everything comes through, then you can have it on there. Okay, cool. I think we're good with emails. If there's any other questions, let me know. If I again, like I said, I'm, my flow is always going to be, uh, you know, continuing to evolve. So I'll tell you more about that stuff. But basically, as long as you know what's going on, as long as they're getting notified for things, then you should be pretty good. Okay, we don't have anything in the in the integrations tab here. Ad, advanced. Uh, okay, over on the other advanced tab, let me clear. Let me clean out some of these tabs here. We got way too much going on. Okay, <clears throat> all right, we're cool. Okay, so on the advanced tab here, let's talk about page setup based on what I have. Cart checkout, my account again. The cart thing is like there is a cart. You could probably disable it if you want, depending on the way that you set it up. But in my mind, I don't want them to have a cart. I used to have them, like I said, have it when I when I didn't have exactly like version one of the portal. We're now kind of like, this is like version three. On version one of the portal, it was a situation where I would send them basically a special link to the product, to like the subscription or whatever. And then they would add that to their cart and then they would go through a checkout. It's kind of unnecessary because like you don't really want them to go through a ton of steps to get this done. You kind of just want to create the order and then send them to the checkout Really, I guess it's the pay page for that specific order is kind of what you want. So um, you can leave these here uh, or you can potentially disable them depending on what you want to do. But the idea would be to not use them. So that's that. You can add terms and conditions whenever you have Whenever you have that. We don't have those just yet because we didn't do the policies yet. Uh, all this stuff, I pretty much have the exact same. We did talk about this though. 
uh, two videos ago, I want to say, where we took out the downloads one because if you're not going to have any, uh, you know, certain pieces of these, then you can take that out. Um, the lost password and stuff. Like, I want to again. <clears throat> I'm using WooCommerce. WooCommerce is extremely powerful. Again, people have different opinions, but I don't want to use WooCommerce for the things that I've already created different workflows for, we'll call it. I've already created this, w, used WS form to create a beautiful and simplistic create account, reset password, all this stuff. I don't want to necessarily now, WooCommerce has a lot of things baked in. You have to understand this just in random rant here about WordPress in general. There's a million ways to do like simple things. There's a million ways to like create a lost, you know, do lost password, log out, whatever. And especially once you start getting other platforms involved, like WooCommerce, WS Form, WooCommerce, WordPress Core. Like now there's like at least three different ways that you could possibly do things. But if you want to have the most control, customization, everything like that, you have to do it one way and you have to always like utilize that way so you can control the user experience of that. If I turn these off, then now it's like, you know, logouts, whatever, but like, but lost password, for instance, like if they, if they lose their password, like I want to make sure that they go through the way that I set up one time. So I don't have to manage it six different ways with six different, you know, um, plugin algorithms and things like that. So long rant to say that just make sure that you know where those things are coming from and, uh, and how that all all going. I don't think I changed anything on any of these, um, these situations here. You can do like high frequency. I think that's kind of by default. I wonder if I have that on the old one. I actually have this one on the old one, which is going to be kind of interesting considering, I don't know if I'm going to be able to kind of pull everything over whenever I want to do that, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, yeah. So like you can do high performance or you can do the old WordPress, whatever. And then as far as subscriptions go, so I know I changed a couple different things here. But again, it may not matter exactly. Um, I changed these to just subscribe instead of sign up now. Subscriber and customer, we definitely talked about that in the past. You could try, you could do initial checkout, and I will. I'll give you another another uh, quick story here. Depending on how you want to do this, you may end up having a situation where because maybe you're doing this for. Um, I bet you a lot of you are doing this probably for more of a subscription based business than I am. And if you want to do that, then maybe you give them like a trial or maybe you give them, you know, something where they, they don't have to pay. You may end up having to do this, like where you, where you have like, um, you know, it's free for 14 days or something like that. You may end up having to do this where, you know, you can, you can, you can initials, you know, check out without a payment method. Um, and they provide, you know, the customer will be required to provide a payment method at the end of the uh, initial period to check out um, and all that. I, I've never had that an issue. I've never had a reason to do that, so I don't have it turned on, but that's an option. Um, allow multiple subscriptions and products to be purchased simultaneously. Yes. Um, because again, mixed content, like I, the, the, to give you an insight, the, that when I'm talking about creating an order, like an invoice for a client, it's probably going to say line item one website creation, or po it actually might say like, um, in, in our case now, it's probably going to say UX design, da, 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 whatever. And it's going to have like that as like almost like a, a it's, it, it'll be a bundle. I don't know if it'll technically be a bundle, but it'll say all the things that we're going to do for website creation. We'll have line items. They'll be like, let's say it's $15,000 for the website creation portion. Then underneath that, the next item or the next section or whatever, it's going to be two ninety nine a month for website management. Now, the first part is actually going to be, it'll either, honestly, it'll either, it's either going to be a one-time payment, it's going to be a two-month payment, two-month subscription technically, or it's going to be a three-month subscription. The third, so that's like the first thing, but my point is like, they're not necessarily subscription. One's kind of a product and one's a subscription or it could be two subscriptions. The long story short is if you need to have multiple things being checked out, like mixed different types of things, then you want to have that on, so I have that turned on. And then retry automatic payment. This is what I was talking about. You can learn more here. It's going to automatically try and those things. I would probably say turn that on. Like don't, don't, don't like don't just like be like oh it failed we're done you know whatever. Like definitely keep trying because it'll keep sending those emails and just at least contact them. And you should reach out to them honestly. But you know just a, it's an idea. Okay. Now these are a couple things. Um, manual renewal payments. So with manual renewals, a customer subscription is put on hold until they log in and pay to renew it. Um, I would probably say no, like just uh, you want this to automatically renew. Auto renewal toggle, display the auto renewal toggle. Um, 
I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, that's again, more of a Netflix type deal. I don't know if Netflix allows you to do that, but my point is like, if they, if they get billed every month on the 14th, then, you know, like it's the 28th or whatever. And like, ah, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to renew next time. Then they, they, they would have an option to turn it off and they wouldn't get auto renewal. That's not really how my business works. So I, you know, if it, it's a cool option, but I don't have that turned on. Um, and then early renewal, accept early renewal payments with early renewal. Customers can renew their subscription before the payment date. There's no reason that I can think to do that. So I turn that off. Like I don't want, or I don't want their money before, you know, like if it's, if it's, we'll talk about this in a second on this next point, but let's say it's the 14th every month. They signed up on the 14th. I don't want their money early. I don't want their money late, but Every month they are paying on the 14th for one month of service. Like it's a long-term subscription in a way, but it's really month to month. Like I want them to be a part of it forever, but it's but our engagement is only a month long at a time. So I don't want them to pay early and get like weirdness there. I just want them to pay every month on the 14th and that guarantees them 30 days or one month of service. And if they want to cancel, then we can talk about contracts and stuff like that. You would probably want to get like at least a 14 day notice and all that type of shit. But the idea would be that they're only paying for a month. So that's that. Okay, but having said that, I've thought about this heavily and I've not done it. Do you want to align the subscription renewal to a specific day of the week, month, or year? For example, the first day of the month. This is a really interesting concept that I have not, I, I mean, I literally it's just said it's on, it is, is it, it's enabled on the other one, but it, it's, it's not like that. The two options that you have. Uh, are option one, whenever the hell they sign up, that is when they get that is when they get billed, which in a lot of ways is fine and dandy, like whatever. It's like if I sign up today on the eighth, then I get the um, then I then I every month on the eighth, that's when I'm getting paid. That that's when I'm paying you two hundred ninety nine dollars. The alternative would be that you set as the as the admin a day, so you click on the line subscription and you say. Um, for all subscription products, uh, never charge fully. So what are our options here? Do not charge any recurring amount. Never, never do not charge any recurring amount. Never a pro rate, pro rate the first renewal. Um, do not charge any, do not charge, uh, charge the full recurring amount at sign up. Uh, virtual, da, da, da. okay, let's just say for all prescription products. This is how I would do it if I did it this way, which I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely considering it. Option A, you come to me on the 8th, you sign up for a subscription, $2.99 a month. You pay $2.99. Then next month on the 8th, $2.99. Next month on the 8th, $2.99. But Billy down the street came on the 12th. Okay, he's paying $2.99 on, on the 12th. Then he's paying $2.99 on the 12th next month. From a uh, consumer perspective, I actually think that's kind of the best in a way. It's not the best, there's pros and cons. But it's nice. It's like I signed up today. I'm paying the full price. I'm paying the full price every day, every every month at that time. Okay. From a business perspective, I will tell you, at least from an accounting perspective, it's kind of annoying as shit because I have to go in and I have to like go through and see, you know, like, like if you're bookkeeping yourself, like you have to go in and you have to see like when, who did it on what day. And there's an easy way to do it, like in QuickBooks and stuff like that to kind of like match because I'm using QuickBooks again, one of the cool things. But the long story short is that now you're getting paid throughout the month rather than just getting paid like at the beginning of the month or whatever and just synchronizing all of those dates. And and, and there's a different way to do it. And the different way to do it is that no matter what, let's say you want to synchronize to the f day one of every month. That's when the renewals are then that means that if somebody pays on the 10th and somebody pays on the 20th and the, the subscription is $3.99, they are pay, that first order is they're paying for the, the proration from the 10th to the first. So let's say, let's just say the month has 30 days in it that month or whatever, like they're paying for 20 days. The person that start that paid on the, that started on the 20th are paying for 10 days on that first one. So it's, you know, it's whatever the, you know, the division there is and it's automatically calculated and all that sort of stuff. But the idea is that then all of your renewals are happening all in the same day. So on the first of the month, you're getting like a big chunk of change rather than getting like $3.99 random times throughout the month. Personal preference, I don't know. I just feel like I need to do some more research on it. The trouble with me is that I don't see a lot of people doing that. Like I don't see like Amazon, Netflix, like I don't see them doing that, I feel like. Maybe Amazon does it, I'm not sure. But like I don't, like I'm getting, I'm getting charged throughout the month, you know what I mean? 
So it's a cool concept. Um, maybe not specifically for this. It might not really matter. Um, but it is something to think about. So if you're going to do that though, definitely try to automate it and definitely, definitely prorate them. Like do not give them free time. Don't do that. Like, like, like if it's, if they got two days right now, then charge them whatever it is, like 20 bucks or whatever it is, and then charge them the full amount for the, you know, for the, uh, for that, for the renewals from then on out on that specific day. Okay. That was a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now. We may change that. Not hundred percent sure, but those are the kind of the settings um, as far as uh, WooCommerce goes, I think there's a lot that we could talk about um, You know, now that we have some of that, that stuff squared away. So from all that, I want to show you a couple things and kind of, you know, kind of talk about all those settings that we changed. There's a couple different things that changed. So the first thing is um, now we can see addresses, if you remember from last time. Addresses used to have billing and shipping. We only have billing now because we really don't need shipping, so it's nice. Again, cleaning up the UI with just some settings. Fantastic. Okay. Here's something that is interesting though that I wanna show you. If you go to orders or you go to subscriptions, you won't necessarily see this all the time, but you will see it right now. And you see this browse products thing. Again, it's gonna depend on your situation, but if you're not, if you're creating something that is not, uh, they're not actually browsing anything and you're just creating it for you to fully control the what they're buying and what their orders are and all that, then uh, you really don't want this to be an option. You don't wanna see this anywhere. And this pops up just by default in a few places in WooCommerce. Obviously in the in the orders and the subscriptions, it'll also possibly pop up if you go to, and I'm not sure exactly what this is gonna look like right now, but if you go to cart, then um, yeah, so like this is a default template. We haven't gotten to the cart yet and depending on what we wanna do, we may or may not wanna play with it. But the idea here is like your car is empty. This is just the default thing. And then it automatically, this I think this is like a you know default bricks thing. It automatically adds these other things to your cart. And then it's going to be really confusing. And then if you just like click this, now it's like in the cart and then we can proceed to checkout. And who knows what this is going to look like. This actually doesn't look terrible. But the point is like, there's just a lot going on here. And um, from a traditional e-commerce standpoint, not the worst thing in the world, looks fine. But um, the problem is, just again, the situation that I'm after is I want to control the flow. So the first thing is a couple things. Also, this whole continue shopping thing. It's it's just there's cool settings, but weird. Okay. So the first thing that we want to think about is this, this browse products, how to get that out of there from most of the places. We may have to do a little bit of like, um, like code snippet type stuff for that. But the other thing um, that is a little more straightforward is the fact that like, if you press continue shopping here, well, if you press continue shopping, for some reason it's gonna come here, but at some point somewhere in this thing, you are gonna get a link. There's gonna be a button somewhere, somehow, that it's gonna take you to the shop page. And this is exactly what we do not want to happen. Like we do not want them to ever be in a situation like this, because think about this. This is gonna list all of your products unless you do something to change this. And it's gonna be every single one. It's gonna be like all the UX, UI, whatever. It might be website management essentials. It might be depending on how you're doing it. It might be like other particular products for your your uh, your customers that you created individually. If you ever go to a website, I actually had this happen, like a pretty big website one time. If you ever go to a website and you see that it's using WooCommerce, like if you have like a Wappalizer or something, and you see that it's using WooCommerce and uh, WordPress or whatever, or even any other platform, but specifically that, type in slash shop and see if you can get to it, even if it's not a, even if it's not, um, like, e even if that's not the, the page or whatever, like a lot of times, like if they, if they do it like this, where they kind of lock it down, a lot of times they'll forget to play with, they'll, they'll forget to fix up this shop link. And it's just really funny. So there's a couple ways that I think that uh, you could deal with this. <clears throat> the first way, this is the old website. You can see we're on shop and it's not showing anything. Now, what I did here was I just created a shop template, like, you know, a, uh, a WooCommerce shop uh, template thing and just uh, made it blank. It's a decent solution. I mean, like probably, hopefully nobody would go to this link anyway. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an idea. I mean, again, but if they rogue, you know, if they go rogue and somehow get there, you could, you could put something else in here that says like, Hey, you know, go back to the dashboard or whatever, almost make it like a 404. Um, or you can just redirect off of the shop page. Like you could set up a redirect where if they go to the shop, like if, if shop ever gets rendered in the URL bar, just redirect to the dashboard. That's honestly kind of a, a half decent option. 
Um, and it's kind of it's kind of cleaner that way because you don't need to play with anything. You could do a medley of both if you want to be super secure, where you just go like. And honestly, in this in this case, I think I actually might might kind of do that. <clears throat> so if we go, um, I guess actually shop is shop is shop actually a page. I think every single one handles it differently. Let me just see if I save this. Or let me see if we go like this. Reload. No, it's still here. Interesting. Is shop is shop a uh it just says builder but i wonder how bricks if bricks handles this any differently because it has all these templates let's just take a look real quick we go to sh do 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 single so product archive i feel like that actually might be our other thing i mean the, the problem is like Wor wordpress and woocommerce is so um uh it's there's so much going on like there's so many like you know the archives and everything like that like if you're if you're really trying to lock everything down or like have control of every single endpoint, every single archive, and everything, you got to be like thoughtful in the way that you um, uh, you you go about it. So I'm gonna say like <clears throat> WooCommerce archive empty or something, and then I'm gonna click edit with bricks, and I don't know what's going on here, so I'm just gonna get out of that. And then um, I'm gonna just do just for test. I'm just gonna put this right here, and then I'm gonna save this. I don't know if this is going to do anything by default. I think I might have to set the, let's see if we do this here. It's templates, conditions, condition. So, okay, if we go archive and post type then products, then this is going to give us kind of something what we what we want, but it's not specific to the shop. So the shop is its own page, right? So if we just edit the shop page and we throw something in here, then it's going to, and we just I am heading, and now we're on the shop and we refresh and it just says I am heading. That again is in one way fixing our problem. Obviously, we wouldn't want it to say this. We could just say whatever, but um, we could like, but we could also redirect it, which I think, which I think is probably what I'm going to end up also doing. But um, that's going to be like where it ultimately, WooCommerce is always going to want for people to come back to the sh slash shop page. That's what they're always going. It's always wants to do because it's set up to do that, which makes sense in a traditional e-commerce thing. But you you don't want to have all that there. So by just by doing something like this, you hide those products. They're not going to be able to see those. The issue is two more things. One, any archives that you have. So I'll leave that there for a second. Let me go back to the products, and let me go to uh, actually categories here because we have a couple categories right now. We have website creation. We have website management. Now, if you look at this, you're going to have product categories and. The reason that it's saying I am heading is because of what we did here. We did archive, pro post type products, and everything like that. So if we delete, if we delete that template, so we had that woo empty template, right? And we had I am heading in there, and it showed I am heading. But if we delete that, like if we take those conditions off and we delete the actual template here, so it's no, so it's in our trash can for a second, and then we refresh the product category, like the archive for product uh, for these product categories. Now we see that we have website management. It's, it's just like a category page, like right? an, an archive, right? So now we have this in here. We don't really want this either if we're, lock, if we're trying to lock down every single thing because there's a chance somehow that they might get to this link as well. So again, you can either um, do a, a blank template here. The problem is uh, redirecting from these archives. Mm, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you, you probably can't do that like in like uh, individually. It probably isn't a great idea. You could potentially uh, maybe like kind of turn them off in a way. I don't know, perhaps. So one thing I want to tell you about is like the fact that if you go back to where we were earlier, we go to WooCommerce settings, products, shop page, you could disable the shop page. But when you disable the shop page, now it's like it comes back. So the concept for me, and again, I'm not, I'm not claiming that this is best practice or anything like that. I'm going to leave this as shop page here. So I have like control of it. I'm going to reload the shop page. Now I have, I have the page. I'm able to edit the page, you know, using bricks for instance. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to try this. I don't know if this is exactly going to work. I don't know if it will, but I'm going to delete this section. It might actually just go back to way, the way it was. Yeah. I don't know why it does that, but I'm going to do section. I'm going to say save. And then maybe if I have something in the, in the builder on the page, now it's going to be blank again. You can you can explore different options. I'm not seeing a direct setting. I've never seen a direct setting to just kind of like get rid of the shop page, even though I feel like that is something that some people would want. But in my use case, in my opinion here, there is no reason that I ever want anybody to go to the shop page and see what the shop page is meant for. So again, this is one of those times where I feel like we're kind of being a little bit like manipulative of Woo WooCommerce. 
Um, so I'm gonna make it a blank, t the page blank, like it's not gonna have the, the archive in there um, or anything like that. I mean, I will say as well is if you do want people to see some items in there, like for certain things like add-ons or whatever, you could you could edit that too so they don't see all of them. That's 100% possible for me. I don't want them to see anything. So I'm gonna do this. And then one extra step I may end up taking is redirecting people away from the shop page um, or at least putting a thing in here that just doesn't confuse them if they were ever to get here. But I don't think they'll, they will get here and I don't want them to be here. So that's why I'm doing this. The next thing, last thing that we're talking about here with the, uh, the categories is the same concept applies here as well, is that like we were talking about, it, it's automatically going to have like if they somehow get to a product category, like it's written somewhere or whatever, automatically with a hyperlink like WordPress and WooCommerce like to do, if they ever get back to this somehow, then they're going to see the products here because this is just like a more specific archive page rather than the whole archive. So if I undo the deleting of this empty archive thing that I had, then, and I refresh this, now it's the same situation. So if we go here and we go to edit this, I'll show you exactly what this is. This is just a a product archive, I think it's called. I think it's what the, what the way they call it when you go to templates in bricks and then you do uh, the drop down there. And I'll do the same thing here. I will just literally delete this uh, I am heading thing. So we just have a blank section because if I didn't have a blank section, I think bricks thinks there's nothing in there and it just automatically does the, the uh, you know, the, the default. And now we have the same thing here. So we have all of our archives, all of our product archives, the main archive and all of the category archives are now going to be nothing. They're not going to, they're not going to see anything there. If we want to redirect like the shop, maybe we could, if we wanted to put a button on each one or something like that says like, you know, go back to the dashboard, we could. Um, and maybe there's a way to dynamically redirect all these categories or just get rid of them totally. I haven't figured that out yet. If I figure it out, I'll let you know. But my point is that in my opinion, I'm going to have categories just for my own sanity kind of in the back end and potentially on the invoice if I can do that. But I don't want them to go to those pages and I don't want them to go to the shop page. So that's how I'm getting rid of all of that. So now that we have the template pieces set up there, well, the, the shop page and then the product archive template, we have that fixed in a way, right? Like they can't see it. They can't do whatever. But again, as we said earlier, WooCommerce loves to drop these random little links in here because it, it is good for you know a traditional UI or whatever user experience to, um, to, to have them be like, oh, you don't have any orders yet? We'll go borrow some products and make some orders. Okay, I understand that. But now when they click on this, that is automatically in here, they're gonna go to you know, whatever. They're gonna go to this. Now, you could, you could do this a couple of different ways. I mean, you could just you know, hide this or whatever, but I am gonna show you one thing that I, I have on the, uh, the old portal um, of what I did here, and it's just a quick code snippet, Google, whatever, I'm not sure where I got it from, probably Stack Overflow. But you can change the link with a, a couple lines of code. You can change the, the what this says, and you can change the link to this button wherever it shows. And again, it's definitely in a couple places. It's in orders, it's on subscriptions, I'm almost certain that in certain cases it, it comes up on the cart, but again, I think I think uh, Bricks kind of does it a little differently. If we remove this item, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Like they, they do it kind of like a little differently. We can handle that separately. But my point is some in some places, you're either gonna need to uh, hide this or change it. I'm, I may end up hiding it, but I'm gonna show you because I can't really think of a reason why you would need to change this to, to dashboard. But what I did in the past was I, ch I changed this to return to dashboard and I changed it to the uh, the link back to the dashboard. So um, if we look over here real quick, we have change text of browse uh, products on subscription pages and order pages. And then we have change link of browse, change the text, change the link. I guess you could maybe put them all in the same snippet or whatever, but whatever. So this is code snippets over there. All I did was I went into our current install. I went to appearance theme editor because I'm not trying, I'm trying not to use code snippet plugins anymore. So I went into the, uh, the functions, uh, child theme functions, PHP here. And then I have it all commented out here right now to show you, but I'm going to uncomment this if I could just get this and hopefully there we go. Um, control slash there and then update file. And then notice here, just like kind of going through it, I'm not gonna pretend that I know exactly what all these things are doing, but we're translating the text from browse products, which it normally is to return to dashboard, and then returning that. And then over here, we're getting the text and we're, um, uh, well, that's that's all part of that one. And then down here, we're returning, we're doing the redirect thing, and instead of the URL that it actually is doing, which is probably, you know, it's just kind of creating all this, um, we're doing slash dashboard instead. And on the last one, I actually had the full URL written there, 
but I decided that I was just going to do a slash because that seems to work fine. And I, this URL is going to change. So I don't, I want to try to keep it as, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to particularly say that or particularly do that, but like, you know, as variable as possible. So I'm not like actually putting a hard, um, URL in there. So, and obviously I'm going to add some comments at the top and bottom. So I know what the hell is going on there, but, uh, if we refresh now, and that was the shop return to dashboard before or uh, shop browse products before and now it's just return to dashboard and we go to the dashboard so that's pretty cool um again in my mind there's not really a big reason to even have this button here in this setup um and you can make it go wherever you want and say whatever you want i might just try to hide it instead but if you want to do it like that that is a uh, a perfectly it's definitely a step in the right direction so they don't even deal with the whole traditional e-commerce setup. Let's continue to dive down the rabbit hole here of WooCommerce in our specific use case, just so you can fully, hopefully I'm doing a decent job of understanding this and you can adapt it to your needs. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this. Okay. So we talked about all those other stuff. Let's talk about how this actual, you know, the minimum viable product of like a, of a, of a flow would be. You have to understand the pieces of WooCommerce. There is a cart page, there is a checkout page, and then there is kind of like a checkout endpoint type thing that is when you're paying for a particular order. Now, again, in my case, it's not traditional. I don't want them to add a product to the cart, click to go to the checkout, and then checkout. That's 99% of the time not going to happen because I want to make sure that I control that flow. If you were going to do that, though, then you would obviously have a cart page. You can style it however you want. You have a checkout page. You can style it you know, with the... With the uh, bricks builder and everything like that you set all those up and then they would add products they would go to the shop or whatever and they would just do their thing in this case uh i pretty much do not want them to ever be on the cart page ever it just doesn't make any sense they're not adding things to the cart they're not normally going back there i don't even this is the technical part i technically don't even ever really want them to be on the actual checkout page because they're not on the checkout page they're on like the payment page of the checkout I'll explain and show you what I mean by that. So let me, the best way to explain it to you, and again, if you don't want this WooCommerce lesson, skip to the next part of the video or whatever, but uh, with the chapters, but here's what I'm seeing and, and kind of the best way I can illustrate it to you. There's nothing in the cart right now, right? So this is what the cart looks like. If we duplicate this and if we go to checkout right now, okay, if I could spell the word checkout. If we go to checkout, notice what happens. We get redirected back to the cart. The reason we can't go to the checkout is because there's nothing in the cart to check out with. Okay, so if we add something to the cart right here, if we click add to the cart, now we obviously have something in the cart and we can proceed to the checkout. This is just going to take us directly to the checkout and we have that, right? So this was our empty cart. It didn't re I didn't refresh this. So this is what our empty cart looks like. This is what our, if I go back to the cart, which I don't, I would never really like that link to be there. This is an empty cart, empty, ca going to checkout with empty cart gives you goes right back to the cart. This is cart uh, with something in it. And then this is checkout when you have something in your cart. Okay. For some of you, maybe this is fine. Maybe this is something that like is going to work for you and whatever. Um, out of the box, Bricks makes this kind of look pretty nice too. So that's solid. Um, but here's the thing. I, like I said, don't really want them to go to the cart. And there's one other thing that I didn't talk about that we will, that we will address here in a second, but I'll show you a uh, example. This is a random order that I made with two products. Okay. And there's this link that says customer payment page. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to bring you, and it's going to bring us this, look at the URL here. It's checkout slash order pay slash all these other numbers, you know, to whatever to, to pay for this order. And this is obviously we don't have an actual thing down here right now. Like we don't have a, uh, we don't have that payment processor hooked up, but if we did have a payment processor, it would just be like, you know, they would be able to uh, enter their credit card information, everything like that. This is like a, you know, like a specific, it's a checkout for a specific order. And this is what my clients normally end up seeing and getting because it's very straightforward. They don't have to add anything to their cart. They don't have to go to checkout. They just boom right into here. And then they do this. This is also the, the other thing about this is this is also, I'm going to do this live. I'm honestly not hundred percent sure if this is going to work like this, but this is, it did. Look, this is going way back to one of our first videos that we made. There was a reason that I chose to do the, when we're doing content control, 
there was a reason that I decided to show the checkout page to people that aren't logged in. This is exactly it. If you show the checkout page to people that aren't logged in, then you're able to do this because everything following it is like kind of, you know, under, under the checkout page. Um, you could even do like order pay possibly, but regardless, if you show the checkout page to people that aren't logged in, they don't have a cart because they haven't, they don't have a cart associated like with their thing or whatever. But if you could, but at this point you could send your client that doesn't have an account on your on your portal, this link, they will be able to go to that link and you can, you can style this. Like we don't worry about like the fact that it doesn't have anything, you know, the heading is gone. The heading was up there or the header was there because we had, uh, people were logged in, but we can create a header for people that aren't logged in in certain pages. Don't worry about any of that. The point is they can see access and pay for an order without being logged in. And, and the other, here's the other big thing is that this client is, this is a guest, but there is a way in WooCommerce in the back here. Okay. It's, it's currently set up to be a guest, but you could actually, you can make it a person. And then if, if somebody logs in, if somebody tries to, to pay for an order, that's not theirs, then watch what happens here. Let me see if we go like this and we just go like this and update. So now this order is no longer a guest. It's associated with me. And then we go back to our incognito tab and we refresh this. Now, obviously it asks for like, you know, our username and password and everything like that. Um, so we have to log in because that's not associated with a guest anymore. I want to, I want to try one more thing. Cause I know I've seen this is if we get rid of this, uh, oops, no, if we get rid of, stop, get, get rid of this, get, get rid of this, get rid of this. There we go. And if we just type in like, let's just type in like test at gmail.com. There is one more thing I want to see. Um, wait a minute. Maybe it's here. Hang on a second. Right here. Right here. Right here. Uh, let me try this. Update. Okay. So you see how this says email address, but it's still a guest order. I know I've done this before. Bingo. Look at this. This is this is actually amazing. When I when I discovered this, I was crazy. Look. So there's two. Th there's there's three ways. It can be a straight up guest order with nobody, like nobody as the, 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 the person, like it could be like an order. That's just like anybody could almost, well, I mean, obviously it would only be one order, but like it, you don't have to put an email address in that's option one, just pure guest. The second one is obviously it's associated with an account, but they don't have to, they have to log in to do it, but they don't have to log in the other way. You know, they could, you could send them this link and it, whatever. The third way is to view this page, you must either log in or verify the email address is associated with the order. That's associated with the order. That's so cool to me that this is just like built in. And like, as soon as I go in here and I type in, this just happens to be the same email address as, uh, this just happens to be the same email address that, that was on an account already, but it doesn't have to be. And then now I can pay for it. Like, oh my God, that's, that's nuts. So my point is, I'm just giving you some options, okay? I love that idea because then this is exactly how I do it. Okay, I'm gonna show you, I'll, I'll show you one more time. One more time, okay? This is exactly how I do it. I'll say client at gmail.com, whatever. I'll copy that, okay? I'll go paste, or I'll, I'll do that, okay? They're, they are not, the, there is, this customer has to be a user. They are not a user, but I did put their email address in here, okay? I'm gonna refresh this. Sure. But it's because we already, you know, did the other thing. Okay. I'm going to put the client email address in here. They do not have an account. I'm going to verify. Boom. I mean, it's so cool. Like, like honestly, like stuff like that is just, I don't know. I'm sure other platforms do that too. But like when I figured that out, that was awesome. So again, to recap, you don't need to have them. They don't need to have an account in order for them to pay for an order. You can create the order so they don't have to add shit to their cart, check out and all that sort of stuff. They, they don't need to have an account. They can have an account. It doesn't really matter. But also if they went through and they paid with that client at Gmail, WooCommerce is going to know that's their, their email address. And then when, if they ever do create an account with that email address, they will have the whole uh, order history. And now they'll just, it'll just be associated with that account. It'll be brought in there. It's so cool. Um, and that's how, that's how I'm going to do it. I'll make a whole dedicated video on the flow, you know, at some point too, because we're not really there yet, but I want to give you guys these tips as we're building, because this is how the sausage is made. Okay. So, um, as far as everything else that we should do, I do want to kind of get rid of the cart essentially, cause I don't see myself ever necessarily needing it or the, um, you can't get rid of checkout, but I don't really want to have like the actual, you know, that main checkout there. And I may end up, I, I want, I do want to style 
what we were just on. So for instance, again, there's three parts, cart, checkout, and order pay. And this is, you know, our one, this is our order pay. We saw checkout and we saw cart. If we go back to uh, Bricks, for instance, if we go to here, and we go to Bricks, Templates here, and we go to Add New, you can see that Bricks does a lovely job here where they have cart, empty cart. That's actually amazing that they have separate ones for those. And then they also have Checkout and Pay is the one that we're going to want. Uh, we're definitely going to want that one because we, we definitely want to make sure that we know. And then the only other thing is Thank You. Um, well, thank you and order receipt too. I, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to handle those just yet. But the thing is like you may also you may also need to, depending on the, the URL structure and everything like that, I'm not 100%, I, I got I to gotta double check it. The only thing we may end up having to go back and do is change it so the content control is like if somebody is not logged in, they're not a customer, we do still want to send them to a thank you page. So we want to make sure that that URL, whatever the structure of that is, is also public. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, really loving the way we're headed here. All right, so we're jumping around a little bit, but as I'm doing this, I'm learning a little bit more, obviously about bricks and everything. And the, since the last time that I built one of these, um, the, the game has changed, obviously, with Gutenberg and all that. So I wanna show you a couple things that may be different by the time you're watching this, but I wanna show you kind of like the, the, the interestingness of all of this. So. We were talking about the pay for order situation, right? What I did was I created a template. I created a template. I went over here. I went to uh, WooCommerce Pay to create that template, okay? I went over to pay for order right here, and I created something like this. This was the, not that one. We'll get to that. This right here was the default way that we saw that this, that this renders. Okay, fine. Obviously, we'll play with it, but okay. So then I went and I created a template. And I started editing that template, and this is kind of where I was where I was going. I added a, a block here, which I think we could see maybe there's too many tabs open somewhere, somewhere, right here. Okay, so this is the template for the pay for order page, okay? And you can see it's just section container and then checkout order table element and checkout order payment element. Okay, seems simple enough. I was gonna put like a heading, obviously, and stuff like that, but I believe that the checkout and order pay relationship, not like an actual relationship, but the association between those two is very similar to like my account and like edit account or orders or subscriptions because it's like a, you know, they're kind of like a parent child type thing um, as far as layout and page and URL structure goes, right? So my thought process is, well, we have a checkout page, so maybe we should edit that. And if we went to go and edit the actual checkout page, there's a couple things that I want to show you. But if you edit the checkout page with bricks, and then you um, and then you go back to like the order pay page, this is what you get, right? So it's like it's it's kind of like in inceptiony in a way. There's like now now I don't have my other. Um, template, which I'm not saying I'm doing this right. I'm just trying to, trying to explain it to you again. Skip around if you don't want to hear this. But I am going to tell you something very interesting, okay? And I think it's actually going to dip. It's going to, I have to say one thing I think I was wrong about. And then I have to tell you something that I think uh, is actually going to affect the way that I have to do this rather than the way, like it's going to limit my options. So if we go to, this is what I'm talking about right here. But if we go to the um, if we remember the checkout page, which right now it's going to look a little weird. So if we remember like how it looked, um, what's the easiest way for me to get back to that? What if I just delete this section real quick and I press this and then I press this. Um, okay. So we're back, we're back to this, but this is actually what I want. If I go to real quickly, just to give you guys an example, if I go to cart real quick, we're, we're talking about kind of two different things at once, but they all relate, so I apologize. All right, we're on the cart. We have something in the cart. We press proceed to checkout. You see this? You remember how I told you, like, oh, wow, this is really nice. Um, this The Bricks does a nice job. I specifically said Bricks does a nice job. I don't think this is Bricks. I don't think this is Bricks, and it's different than how I used to because with Elementor and everything like that, it was different back in the day, and I don't, I don't know what's going on, but this is not Bricks because if you go to checkout and you click edit page, not edit with Bricks, this is what you get. So this is being pulled from like the block editor, right? Which is fantastic. Honestly, this is honestly it looks really good. Um, this is being pulled from there. But here's the problem though. It's like I would love to use this if I could, 
but I don't think I can. And the reason I don't think I can is because I came down here and it says, some active extensions do not yet support this block. This may impact the shopper experience into its payments, credit card, and an e-check. So I think, I think I can't use it. So if I, what does this do? The classic experience. If we update this, we're learning together here. This is Gutenberg content now, apparently. Weird. Okay, I have no idea what that did. My point is that I need to have a way. I want to use that payment processor. Okay, cool. All right, so this is more the, the traditional thing that I'm that I'm accustomed to seeing. Okay, okay, no problem. So I guess apparently this would work. But my thing is too, it's like I also would love to have control of this. So I'm probably going to end up using it kind of with bricks. Um, but yeah, so we have to, but basically I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to create checkout, potentially, you know, get rid of the cart and then the whole, um, order pay thing. But the order pay was the specific one. And I think because we're doing different things with the checkout, whether we're, we're editing the page or editing, like making a checkout template, we got to just kind of figure that out to, to make sure that we do the order pay thing properly. Cause that's the important one, right? So if we go back over to order pay, just out of curiosity. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know, kind of interesting, but I didn't realize that, uh, that, that does look really good. I just don't know if that payment processor that I want to use specifically interacts with it yet. I guess it doesn't. I know that we're going to need to talk more about this, obviously, because we're just getting into the, the nitty gritty of kind of setting these templates up and everything, but I'm sure this video is getting kind of long. So I want to end this one here. Uh, make sure you're liking these videos. If you're really enjoying these seri in this, this series, let me know if you're getting any value out of this. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments down below as well. Next video, we'll talk more about this. We'll get into these uh, templates. We'll knock those out. And then we'll start thinking about uh, the other pieces of this. Um, yeah, it's really coming together. So thank you guys so much for the support. And I'll talk to you in the next one.